12th of March. Me and M went to see Dad after shopping in Asda at about six-ish. He was in a room of his own, machines pinging and ponging, with the effects of his treatment, medication and the slow recovery of general anaesthetic. He was in the room with us one minute and then away in a lost world of old memories the next. He kept telling me that I should give some photos to his cousin. She should have them, they are of her mother, and I wasn't sure who he was talking about. Then he was back in the room. He sort of drifted in and out for the time we were with him. He was much brighter again, but still confused by some things, not least by his conviction that Nicola had helped him get out of bed at 5am. He was chatting quite normally when he said this. I asked him which Nicola, and he looked at me with disdain and explained that it was our Nick, and that half hour later her friends came to help her out. He was smiling. She's out by there now, he said, indicating towards the nurse's station. M was tearful when we left, not least because as we were saying our goodbyes, he called her. We paused and took a step back into the room, and with a strong, clear-as-a-bell dad voice, he said, Don't forget me, Em. With a huge, broad, Ronnie Dirk smile. Oh, my God, neither of us will ever forget that. Later in the week, he was transferred to the High Dependency Unit and then back to the Cyril Evans Ward, where he was admitted initially. Still frail, still weak, but more lucid, talking with meaning, understanding and recognising everyone with a big smile. It was great to see him shuffling about on his Zimmer frame. At one point, a nurse called Mark explained that he was doing well. A bit slow, he said, but good. We weren't sure whether Dad was listening or not. He was. With an expression of mock surprise, he said, I thought I was flying along. 20th of March. Dad was discharged from hospital today. Me and Paul went to get him at 1.30 in the afternoon. He's still weak, though, and we'll have to be around him constantly. I think we were all surprised that they sent him home. Delighted, obviously, but concerned that he is still so weak and shaky on his feet. 23rd of March. Bought the super recliner with Mam in Baglin this evening. We were hopeful that it would help Dad get comfy and sleep. He hasn't slept since coming home from hospital and just sits slumped in his chair. The recliner looked great and after I had a go, I said that Mam should have a try to see how easy it is to operate. After a little convincing, she did. I guided her hand onto the button to show her. She pressed and the chair reclined from an upright position. She said, it is easy, Dad will be able to do this, and kept the finger on the button until she was lying there completely flat. I started laughing before it stopped reclining. The people we were buying it off joined in, and it was wonderful at such an emotional time to see Mam in hysterics lying flat on her back in a stranger's living room in Baglan. Thursday the 27th of March, Dad has been sedated all day today and yesterday. We are hopeful that he will come around tomorrow. Went to see Mam. Paul was there painting the fence. Then Carol came with Evie. She's such a lovely little girl. They were out the back with Paul when I dozed off in the new chair. 29th of March. Carol's 51st birthday yesterday. Went to see Dad at lunchtime. Nurse Caris said that the consultant will explain more tomorrow. I'm working first thing and have a board meeting at 12 o'clock at Mayhill Community Centre, so Paul will take Mam down. 30th of March. Told the board that Dad was unwell and so I would have to leave my phone on. I had a call to leave not long after the meeting started. They all wished me well. Roy, the chair, said, Good luck, pal, if you need anything. Carol met me out the front of the house to say that Dad has no chance of recovery. This evening... Jamie and Claire went to visit. Afterwards, Jamie asked if I thought Bamper knew he was there. I told him that I'm sure he did, without a doubt. Saturday the 31st of March 2012. Dad died just after one o'clock this afternoon. Mam had a phone call from the hospital saying for us to go up to Morriston. Me, Paul, Mam, Carol, Andrew, Nicola and Kerry comforted each other. Jamie was with lots of customers in Penarth and couldn't leave when I explained what was happening. We left the room at about 12 o'clock for them to switch the machine off, then we returned just to be with him. 
Just after one o'clock, I text Jamie to see where he was, just passing Bridge End. I was worried that Jamie wasn't far away, so before we went back to see Dan for the last time, I thought I'd better go outside and wait for him. I missed his van coming into the car park, but saw him stride in towards the hospital. I walked over, and as he saw me, I said, Pampa died half hour ago.'